Welcome to Fire Engineering Training Minutes. My name is Paul Dansback. Today we are in a building that contains a building fire pump. We are going to review the component parts that all firefighters should be familiar with when responding to such a building. We're going to start off with the control valves. There is an OSNY control valve on each side of the building fire pump. Our fire pump is a horizontal shaft electric driven fire pump. Just like on fire pumpers, there is a suction side gauge and a discharge side gauge. Firefighters, when responding to this building, should a fire be occurring in the building, would want to look at the gauges in order to determine the discharge pressure on the fire pump. Next, we're going to walk over to the fire pump controller to explain the component parts and their functions on the fire pump controller. This is our fire pump controller. The knife switch should always be in the on position. When the knife switch is in the on position, the building fire pump is ready to go to work. Every fire pump controller has a manual run switch. This is the manual run switch. Each manual run switch has instructions on how to operate. They are very simple to engage. By engaging the emergency run switch, the building fire pump will start and not stop until this run switch has been disengaged. The emergency run switch overrides all the automatic starts and stops of the building fire pump. Firefighters should be aware of a couple of other component parts on the building fire pump installation. On the top of the centrifugal fire pump is an air release valve. Unlike fire department pumpers, there is no priming pump on a building fire pump. There is an air release valve that will allow air trapped in the centrifugal pump to be released. It would not be an abnormal condition to have some water slightly discharging out of the air relief valve. As we talked about, the control valve on this system is an OS and Y valve. Firefighters will note that there are two control valves. The control valve on the suction side of the fire pump will always be an OS and Y valve. A second control valve, in this case it is an OS and Y valve, is required on the discharge side of the fire pump. By having two control valves, one on either side of the fire pump, the fire pump can be isolated and serviced or removed for service. That will not interrupt the flow of water to the building. You will note, prior to the first OS and Y valve is a vertical pipe. The vertical pipe runs up, it runs horizontally, and runs vertically back down into the sprinkler system. That loop of pipe is called the bypass loop. The bypass loop allows water to move into the automatic sprinkler and standpipe system by moving around the fire pump in the event the fire pump is out of service. If companies are operating at this building or any building with a fire pump, they should determine the discharge pressure on the building fire pump. If the discharge pressure on the building fire pump is greater than the pressure the fire department is pumping into the FDC, the fire department is not moving any water into the building system. The, con the check valve on the system is not opening because there is a higher pressure on the system side of the check valve than the fire department is pumping with the fire department pumper. Many buildings today are equipped with building fire pumps. From high-rise buildings to large big box retail to large warehouse occupancies. When a building in your jurisdiction has a fire pump installation, firefighters should go out, pre-plan the building, understand the component parts, and understand how the fire pump functions. Thank you for watching this session of Fire Engineering's Training Minutes.